So today's video is my 18 week pregnancy update. The last one I did was 3 weeks ago at 15 weeks and currently I'm 18 weeks and 3 days. According to my app, the baby is 5.6 inches, 6.7 ounces, and the size of a sweet potato. And since my last video, which was 3 weeks ago at 15 weeks, I've had one OB appointment. Nothing was too different, we just did an ultrasound and went over some basic questions such as weight gain, how you're feeling, etc. Um, nothing too exciting. Um, I thought that we could have found out the gender at that time, but it was still too early to tell. That was at 16 weeks. So the exciting news is next Monday, which is in less than a week from now, we will have the longer ultrasound appointment, which lasts about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. And there they will go more into detail on the baby's organs. And hopefully we should be able to tell the gender at that time too, because that's when I'll be officially 19 weeks. So yeah, that should be pretty exciting, and I've been anticipating this for so many weeks. Um, so basically in today's video, I'm going to have a brief haul of some uh, maternity clothes that I picked up. These clothes aren't like strictly maternity. They can also transition into what you can wear after you give birth as well. So I kind of wanted to buy with that strategy in mind so it's not just like a one-time use thing. And I also got a few baby clothes. I didn't spend that much money on it yet because... Once again, we still don't know the gender, but I couldn't resist. Come here. Come here, sit. And it looks like Lacey is joining us once again. She always likes to pop in a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Good girl. So I guess we'll start out with doing the belly shot. And I've noticed that the past week or so, it's finally starting to show and not just look like bloat. I know I mentioned that in my previous video at 15 weeks that it was slowly starting to show, but I feel like now it's even more noticeable. And like, for example, if I'm laying down and getting up, I don't want to like use too much of my abdominal muscles because of course, you know, you're not supposed to do any abdominal exercises during the second trimester. So I just try to be really careful with that area and like don't get up suddenly and like strain those muscles. Like maybe I'm being like paranoid, but I do feel like my stomach is different now and it's finally showing. So I want to be extra careful in that area. So this dress that I'm wearing right now is actually part of the pieces that I picked up from that maternity store, which I will go over in a second, but first as I mentioned before, we're going to do the belly shot real fast. So yeah, basically a lot of maternity clothes, they have like the tie right underneath your bust to kind of accentuate the waist that you do not have anymore. But yeah, so this is the belly shot. It's becoming more noticeable and especially it doesn't look like bloat as much because it kind of sticks out more versus just like going out on the sides. So yeah, from the front it's hard to tell, but I guess I think I'll show it in like, if I wear a tighter shirt you can see it more clearly because right now like dress kind of disguises it if you want something like low key. I'm going to try it with like a tank top, which I normally don't wear tank tops this tight when I'm pregnant, but yeah, just for the sake of showing the belly shot. So yeah. So here we have it not like sucking it in obviously or trying to stick it out, it's just normal. So I'm just like wearing these what used to be loose sweatpants with like kind of like a looser waistline. So sad, like these used to be loose but now they're obviously very form fitting. So now I'm going to get started with the clothing portion of today's video. It's as I mentioned from a maternity store, it's called Motherhood Maternity. And I never thought I'd be shopping at those stores. I thought I would just, you know, buy larger sized clothes. But actually, this one, they had an outlet store um, in Cabazon area, which is kind of close to San Diego. Um, and they had a lot of good deals. I was shopping the sales section because I don't want to spend a bunch of money on, you know, maternity clothes. But it turns out that these clothes can easily be transitioned into items that I would wear post-pregnancy as well. So let's just get started um, with the first thing that I'm wearing. So the second piece I have is this long blue knit dress and once again it has this um, tie on the waistline. It's just a nice navy blue dress. I know it kind of looks like a winter style but I think you know blue is a universal color. You can wear all year round practically. The next piece I have is this long black dress. I believe this is like a polyester material but yeah it has a nice fold over neckline, a high empire waist as well and of course that tie that a lot of maternity clothes have and it has a quite long length and the edging of the skirt is kind of like asymmetrical but it's not like a high low skirt so 
I think it's pretty flattering. The next piece I have is this sundress, actually from the Jessica Simpson maternity collection. I like her collection quite a bit. It's kind of like updated and doesn't remind you of like maternity clothes because yeah, this definitely looks like something that you can find at any old store and I like the print. Um, this one has a tie as well that will go in the front. So I think this dress might be my favorite. I really like the halter neckline and the fact that it has straps as well so you're not just relying on that halter neckline to kind of like squeeze your neck if you know what I mean. And of course it has the tie around the waist right here. And yeah, this length is a little bit shorter, but I think if you wear some like gym shorts underneath it, you shouldn't have a problem. And the last piece I got is this like tunic type, not dress, but you know, longer tunic. Um, yeah, so this is a nice stretchy material with a high empire waist as well, flattering v-neck, three quarter sleeves, and yeah, this is from the Jessica Simpson maternity collection as well. So all the dresses that I got were in a size small, and I do notice that motherhood maternity clothes, at least the pieces that I picked up dresses wise, run a little bit larger because of course you want it to be um, not too form-fitting, loose and comfortable. And as I mentioned, I did purchase some newborn clothes as well. These are from Gymboree. We went to the Gymboree outlet in Cabazone Outlets, which is kind of near Palm Springs. And these I got for a really great deal. This entire bag is only under 10 bucks. So I think this is like a great gender neutral starter kit. So the first thing is this little, um, I don't know what you would call it, like onesie, I guess. Yeah, short sleeve and a light stretchy cotton material because the baby will be born in September, which I don't think will be too hot or too cold. So yeah, anyways, I think this would be, this is so cute with these little um, patchwork animals on it. And from what I'm thinking, yellow is a gender neutral color. Um, but people that I show this to, they think it leans more towards like boy clothes. So we'll see. Um, but anyways, the bottom just has these three snaps. I know people recommend to not do the clothes with like a bunch of snaps because it's going to take forever to undo it and redo it every time you change their diaper, um, but I think three is a good amount, it's not too much. It's just hard to imagine a baby being this small, and this is considered three to six months, so like that seems so tiny, I can't even imagine yet, but yeah, very exciting and the first portion of the baby haul, I guess. And I also have this matching bib which I couldn't resist. Oh, there's a tag on there. Once again, it has that Patrick animal embroidery, and I think the baby's gonna be going through a lot of bibs from what I hear. Um, you're gonna be doing the laundry a lot as well. So yeah, this is like my first time ever obviously buying a bib or baby clothes, so it's kind of like, it's very, very much a new thing. And the last thing I got are these matching socks. So the one here obviously has the animal face, the other ones are the yellow, which perfectly matches the other two pieces that I got and all this for 10 bucks is a pretty good deal. It's like a nice starter kit and you know, so these socks are for three to six months and I think socks you can wear a little bit big and it won't matter so that's why I kind of want to size up. Um, the bib obviously is one size and this piece is for three to six months. So yeah, I guess I got everything a little bit bigger than newborn. When they're newborn, I don't think they go out that much because you don't want them to get sick, obviously, so they're mostly going to be wearing like clothes that you'd wear at home. So not that they don't have to be cute, but I think they can be more basic and functional during that time. So far, my favorite baby clothes store would probably be Gymboree. We visited Carter's and Oshkosh. Oshkosh, obviously, is so classic for those denim overalls. I was tempted to pick them up, but I don't know if it's going to be a girl or boy yet because they have clear definitions on like girl overalls with like some pretty white lace on it versus the boy overalls with like that train stripe kind of like so 90s um yeah but anyways that will probably be for another haul video or if I see them again in the future I know I haven't really talked about pregnancy products in terms of like skincare stretch mark cream and such yet but I do have one product that I have been using ever since the beginning of my pregnancy. I keep forgetting to mention it in my other videos. But it's, the, it's this Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula with Vitamin E Stretch Marks Cream. I found this at Target and it's quite reasonably priced, only 5 bucks. You get 4.4 ounces and to me it smells kind of like cocoa. Obviously Shea Butter has the natural like cocoa scent, so I think it's pretty pleasant. And yeah, so this is what the cream looks like. 
It just basically looks like a lotion. I apply it every single night after I shower just as a routine and so I can remember, especially since the bump is starting to grow now and I think I have high hopes for these sort of products and so with respect to weight gain, I know in my last video I've gained four pounds since then, basically four pounds in a month, but right now I've gained about 10 pounds in total. Um, next week I'll be officially halfway through the pregnancy, which would put me at 19 weeks. Um, obviously the pregnancy can go longer than that, but approximately halfway. So I hope I can just remain at only gaining 10 pounds at that time because that's already almost 50% of the recommended amount, which is like 20 to 25, maybe 30. So I don't want to overdo it because it's going to be a lot of work trying to lose it in the future. And I know the last trimester obviously is when you have the most weight gain. So yeah, 10 pounds heavier. It's weird seeing the number on the scale go up and it's weird not trying to lose it when I see the number going up or try to eat less and exercise more. So yeah, totally a new thing. I'm trying to eat healthy, not overeat. It's really hard because it's not like I have one particular craving. I pretty much like all food and that's not like me. Usually I know how to stop and it's not hard like walking away from food. Like if I picture something in my mind that I want to eat or watch someone else eat it, whether it be in a movie or in real life, it makes me really want to have it and yeah, I guess that would be considered a craving. <laughs> Generally speaking, I don't crave sweets and I know before I got pregnant I had chocolate like every night and that's why I try not to buy chocolate but I'll receive it as gifts so I eat a little bit every single night and now I don't even care about having chocolate or buying candy, making cookies, eating cake, buying ice cream. Like I literally walked past the ice cream aisle at Trader Joe's and didn't want anything. Like I don't want to waste calories on it but it also doesn't look good. I've been really into salads lately. So I know like the old wives tale says if you're more into savory foods it's a boy. If it's more if you're more into sweets it's a girl. Um, so I don't know if I believe that but as of now nope I don't have a sweet tooth anymore. The other symptom that I've had consistently throughout my pregnancy thus far is my extreme thirst. Extreme may be an exaggeration but I still wake up two to three times every night to drink water, use the restroom, and basically what has been helping me drink water is I have this huge cup from Victoria's Secret. I got it free from one of their promotional offers. And at first I thought like this thing is kind of like oversized, big, not attractive. I don't want to, you know, carry this thing around. But actually this thing helps me drink a ton of water, especially since it has a straw. And also it helps that it's not clear so you don't know how much water you're drinking. You just want to like, you know, you want to drink up all the water in it. You don't want to like monitor it and feel like, oh, I have to drink this much more water and feel that it's like a chore. So for some reason, this bottle's really been helping me drink more water um, and it tastes better that I got it for free as well. But yeah, I still have extreme thirst and once again, one reason for that is your blood volume increases so it makes you more thirsty. So my fatigue is so much better than the first trimester, obviously, as I had known and as many people had mentioned that it would get better. So I don't usually nap anymore. My energy level drains faster. For example, if I'm doing an all-day event or going somewhere, I will get tired a lot faster. Maybe I have like 50% of the energy that I had before. So, I mean, that takes some adjustment. If I keep like wearing myself out, I'm gonna feel like I'm dead and like lethargic and have no energy to continue on, which is so weird because I'm used to just like powering through and I can walk, you know, for hours on end and not get tired. But obviously that everything changes when you get pregnant. So I think that should do it for today's video. This was the 18 week video. Hopefully I should do one next week after we know the gender and do like a gender reveal thing. I know a lot of people like to have gender reveal parties with their family, but my husband and I live in LA. Our parents are in Northern California, both of our parents are. So I think, I don't know if they want to wait a few more weeks when we see them later in May to tell them the gender, you know, in a gender reveal party, or just call them and have them know instantly once we find out. What I'm thinking is they probably will get a phone call with the news and they don't have to wait. So yeah, stay tuned for next week's video if you are interested. And once again, thanks for watching.